but you. Oliver Ekman Larson might be the most overrated player in the league. You lose for a sixth straight year, no matter what the yeah. circumstances are. It's a joke. Who's going to overtime goal? You know what? Just Barry Cockney. Go, KK. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm changing my mind. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> Ladies, gentlemen, fellow sports fans, and hopefully soon to be uncontested subscribers. I don't know how I didn't break a laugh. Take two of the intro. Welcome to episode 60. Make sure to hit that sub button before we get started. We're at 627. Help us out right now. And I'm making an offer right off the top. John said he needed some energy going into this show. He has a photography account at J Marias Photo. We'll leave it in the description. If you follow his Insta and comment saying you followed and list your favorite NHL team, we'll make a vlog for your team. So make sure to do that. Give him a follow. These John does not be like the that offer. Greatest follows ever. <laughs> <laughs> better be some active follows. You got some. Yeah, bud. Anyways, no one really yeah. watches the intro, anyways. But thank you very much for follow. Also, sorry for not uploading last week. Uh, for the second episode, not that we didn't, like, well, not that we missed anything big, because nothing really that big happened, but uh, just some technological things got in the way, and just we have a lot going on. Well, also, but, look, it was going to be a Canucks-themed episode. Yeah. We land, you've told by the descript the title of the video by now. We have David Quadrelli of, of Canucks Army, uh, Canucks Conversation contributor at Sportsnet. So we have him, and it's going to be all Canucks stuff. So, so it's going to be better content. than what we had last time. And we're going to kind of re-record a part of that episode that we thought was good for this one. Yeah. So you didn't miss anything. Yeah. But we'll start um, We'll start with Bet99. We'll roll that. And then we're going to go right into the David Quadrelli after that. So enjoy the video, guys. John, let's get to our favorite Canadian sports book, Bet99. When you guys register, use the link in our bio and make sure to use the code UNCONTESTED1. And whenever you bet, use our code UNCONTESTED1 for plenty of offers and rewards. Let's talk a bit about Bet99. Bet99 is a Canadian sportsbook and casino. They offer in play betting, player props, a cash out option, and many more great products. There are a variety of sports available on the website to bet on, including NHL, NBA, NFL, MLB, and MMA. Bet99 works smoothly on both desktop and mobile. The Bet99 mobile app can be downloaded from the homepage of the website. Depositing and withdrawing funds is hassle-free with a number of well-known methods available to use so you know your money is safe and secure. The website can be viewed in both English and French and customer service is available 24-7 on live chat. Go to bet99.com and make an account to get started. Please gamble responsibly. 19 plus, play responsibly and check the bio for details on where it's available to bet on. If you have any questions or concerns about your gambling or the gambling of someone close to you, please contact Connects Ontario at 1-866-531-2600 to speak to an advisor free of charge. Again, for all disclaimers on location and whatnot, check the bio and gamble responsibly. Our next guest is from Canucks Army. He's a co-host of the Canucks Conversation. He's an, an NHL award voter with the PWHL. He contributes on Daily Faceoff. You can catch him occasionally on Sportsnet 650. Some refer to him as quads. We now refer to him as a friend of the show. We are pumped to welcome to Uncontested, David Quadrelli. How you doing? Good. That was quite an intro. That was definitely the best podcast intro I've ever been given. So thank you for that. What it's nice to be here. What an honor. What an honor. And we got a bunch of Canucks stuff. So we've had a bunch of Canucks subs lately, all asking for the Canucks content. This is your guy here, one of the biggest voices of Canucks hockey on Twitter and just in general, honestly. And John, you wanted to ask the first question, so I'll let you go with that. Yeah, so we found out today the big news. Besser's out for three to four weeks. Had surgery today. Obviously, that's a big loss for the team. How do you see that affecting the team? Well, I mean, it spells opportunity, right, for Niels Hoaglander, a guy who it was looking like for a while there, especially on the first two days of training camp, could have found himself on the outside looking in. He's impressed Bruce Boudreau. He's impressed Jim Rutherford. So, you know, that's no discredit to Niels Hoaglander. Like, there's a very good chance that um, even without the Besser injury, he makes the roster in some capacity. Maybe he's in a fourth-line role. Uh, but now with the Besser injury, 
Niels Hoaglander is going to get a top nine opportunity with this team out of training camp and out of the preseason. And you like that opportunity for him, but you do feel really awful for Brock Besser, right? Um, again, like this is a guy who's gone through so much and just can't seem to catch a break. Um, you know, there's not much more to it than that. I mean, Brock Besser felt this was the year he was going to score 30 goals and you know, now he's probably going to have to score at about a 40 goal pace in order to reach that. Um, you know, if he's missing about uh, like five to 10 games to start the season, right. That's a, that's, that's a tough blow for a guy who's trying to, um, you know, set that career high in goals and was really looking forward to, um, you know, to putting everything behind him. And even talking to Luke Shen, like Luke Shen was saying that he had a hunch that Besser was going to have a big year. So it wasn't just fans. It wasn't just Brock Besser that thought Brock Besser was going to have a big year. And who knows, he might still, uh, but it is a tough blow and you feel bad for the guy. He's not going to get the preseason. He's not going to get the chance to um, do that right out of the gate, but opportunity, right? That's what it comes down to. I even think of a guy like Andre Kuzmenko, who, um, you know, is going to have more opportunity, not necessarily in the top six lineup, like he'd already be there. But that power play, he was being used in Besser's spot last night in the preseason game, right? And, you know, you can't really think of a better guy for that spot right now. That's what Kuzmenko did in the KHL for the most part. Um, he looked fine in that role last night. He set up Bo Horvat for a few chances in the bumper spot. Uh, so it's opportunity for Nils Hoaglander to get into the top nine. And it's opportunity for Andre Kuzmenko to get on the first power play unit. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree there. And Brock just has not been able to catch a break uh, with anything right now. And it sucks because, like, he was so confident. Like he said, this is the most confident I ever heard Brock Besser. He's like 30. This is the year. But you mentioned Andre Kuzmenko there. And obviously, uh, a lot of people outside of the Vancouver market don't really know him too well. Um, what should be the expectations for him? How has he looked from you saw him? I saw all your coverage there at the Scotia Barn. And uh, how's he looked to you so far? Yeah, so with Andre Kuzmenko, it's really interesting, right? Because as you kind of said, he's a bit of an unknown commodity. And, you know, everybody, myself included, is kind of getting their first real looks at him. Like, I've seen highlights from the KHL. And I haven't watched Ska games from front to finish just to watch, uh, just to watch Andre Kuzmenko. But, you know, what I have seen through my viewings of him in Whistler and, like you said, at Scotia Barn there, eight rinks in Burnaby, what I've kind of seen is just, you know, the guy's hands are very good and he's very quick. He's very agile. Uh, what he does lack a little bit is maybe the north south speed and maybe even a, just a little bit of, you know, understanding how fast the NHL is, right? Like he's really good in tight when he doesn't have a lot of space. But I think what he's learning right now and what I think you're going to see him learn uh, is just that he doesn't have as much time as maybe he did in the KHL, right? Like everybody's faster. Um, and it was funny. Like I even asked Vasily Pod Coles in the first week, everybody was here. I chatted with Pod Coles and, and I just said like, what's the biggest difference between the KHL and the NHL. And he just told me it was speed. He's like, everything happens faster. Everybody hits harder. Everybody hits faster. Like defenders are closing in on you a lot faster than they are in the KHL. And this isn't even like about the bigger ice surface. Cause the KHL is on the same ice surface as the NHL. Everybody gets that wrong because they switched only a few years ago, but you know, it's the same ice surface now, but it's really just the skill of everybody that's playing in the NHL. Right. Uh, Pud Colson said that was basically the big thing he had to learn was the speed and how much time he really had. Um, and it, it was even interesting because in the scrimmage, there were a few plays where Kuzmenko would lose a defender and then at the line, try to make a long pass within the zone, uh, maybe like a point to point, for example, and it would get picked off more than a few times. And I think he was just kind of learning, you know, where guys go in their rotations, you know, um, where the four checkers are going to be, where the in zone coverage is going to be and, you know, how quick they are and how good they are at reading passes at this level. Um, so I think that's what he's, he most has to learn, but look, he's a guy whose skill is undeniable. And, and I think it's going to shine through at some point here. Do we have a point prediction for him or? Oh, for Kuzmenko. I think you probably set the over under at like 40 or 50. And I'd say he's probably getting over 40. I'm not sure if he's getting over 50. I'll, I'll go with 45 points for Kuzmenko. That's fair. And you mentioned put Colson in that answer there. And you mentioned also before about Brock Besser, how even the players were confident. I feel like there's so much confidence just from the players this year that I don't know. Maybe it's because there's been less coverage with covid so people haven't been able to get into the rooms but something where all the players have just been like yep this guy's gonna be really good this year and that's on Vasily Patkolson 
like the talk from the media, the talk from the players. There's a lot of expectation for Pods this year. How's he looked and what are your expectations? Yeah, Pod Colson's look great. Like you guys saw it last night, right? That goal uh, that he scored after getting the feed from Myers on the half wall there. This is unbelievable. Like it, to see Pod Colson now, and let's think about what he was a year ago, right? Like a year ago, you know, he was here and he wasn't trusted to do really anything. Like he was scoring goals in games where he would have seven minutes of ice time. And that was because it was hard to trust him with the, without the puck sometimes, right? And then, you know, within two months of that, uh, you know, he's out shutting down games, right? Like he's out late in games and, you know, he's being the defensive forward that we all know him as now just the confidence for Bud Colson is huge. And, you know, it goes to the off ice, off ice stuff as well. Right. Like again, in that same conversation where he told me about the KHL speed, um, we were just kind of talking about his second year in Vancouver and he was just like, yeah, I come here and it feels like home now. Right. Um, whereas his first year, he didn't know the language. He didn't know anybody. Now he's, you know, acting as a tour guide for two new Russian guys that are in town and his English is ridiculously good. And the thing we've always heard about Bud Colson, is that he's an extremely smart person um and I, I think how fast he's picked up the english language is really reflected in that uh, because russian and english are quite different languages and he's uh his, his english like you can you can easily have a conversation with him it's 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 quite remarkable really oh he's so well spoken i remember even at the media availability at the end of the year last year like no one had any clue really what to expect i guess just from the general fans perspective and he spoke so well i found but you wanted to ask him about Elias Pettersson. Yeah, so Elias Pettersson, it's no secret. I heard it from Lewis every single day during that time. He had a rough start to the beginning of last season. What's kind of your expectation for Vancouver's star this year? Yeah, I, I, I've said it before, and I'll say it again for sure, is I, I do think Elias Pettersson is going to be the Canucks leading scorer this year. Um, I've said that for a while. I, I really think that... Uh, we're just going to see Elias Pettersson kind of at another level. Um, and this, this comes from, you know, just watching him at that, those few skates he had in Burnaby, right? Uh, just the way he was kind of moving around the ice and then talking to him and him saying like, yeah, I didn't take any vacation. I just worked out and was on the ice all summer. And then that's really reflected in his game and what you're seeing from him, uh, even just at training camp, the way he's able to just take it, take over, um, you know, no matter what he's doing. And then you even saw it last night in the preseason. I'm just, I, I'm looking at him now as kind of like, wow, okay, this guy is ready to uh, continue what he did at the end of last year. Cause if you think about it, like, you know, he struggled at the start of last year, but that pace he was scoring on the second half, I don't think it's unsustainable. I don't think it was a guy just on a hot streak because, you know, he's had a lot of time to reflect about it. And he's even said as much that he's like, yeah, I went through that, that thing at the start of the year when I was playing poorly. And he's very glad that he went through that because now he knows how to get himself out of it. He knows what he needs to do. Um, again, it's just, there's a lot of pressure last year with contract talks, just a whole bunch of other stuff, but the thing, the thing that I most admire about what he said about it all is he doesn't want to hear about it, right? Like he doesn't want to hear about the wrist. Um, he doesn't want to hear about not having the proper stick when he started the year uh, because of COVID supply chain issues that were happening. Uh, he doesn't want to hear any excuses for himself. He, he owned up to last year not being good enough, and he knows he needs to be better this year. And I, I fully expect him to be better this year. I think this is the year uh, you know, where PD rakes 80 points. I, I 100% agree with that. I've been saying that to you all summer. I've been saying it to everyone. This guy's, I think he's going to have a big season as well. And I just the mindset and everything sounded, yeah. he sounds in like such a better spot. But um, we won't keep you too long here, Quads. Last question, just quick rapid fire. Playoff team, yes or no? Uh, yeah, they are. Yeah. Okay. Well, you heard it here. Um, <laughs> thank, thank you so much for coming on. We really appreciate you doing this, especially during Canucks training camp. Uh, everyone check out all of his work. We'll leave all that in the description of this video. I listen to Canucks conversation all the time. It's one of the sources where I get my info from. And uh, you and Chris Faber do a great job there. I was actually a guest on that show like a long, long say, time ago. That was the one, right? Yeah. I think That's I awesome. That. We'll have to have you back on. <laughs> yeah, whenever, man. Um, but thanks for joining us. And uh, we'll get back to the episode. Do you hate the offseason? With bench clears, you'll be able to rep your team's colors all year long. 
Bench clears is the most comfortable hockey tank you'll ever wear. Their tanks are 100% polyester, making them incredibly soft and breathable as well as having a clear design completely flush with the fabric. On top of their high quality tanks, they have just released their new hockey shorts, women's racerback shirts and hockey sunglasses all available with your favorite team's design. To order, go to their website benchclears.com also available in the description and use the promo code uncontested sports 10 that's uncontested sports 10 all sizing and info is available right there so thanks to quads for coming on uh, it was really nice getting to talk with him about the canucks i hope the canucks fans like that content plenty more coming john the pesky pick yeah man so daryl sutter gave us a fantastic and rare pesky pick from the nhl last week uh he was asked by a reporter that Toffoli is now in Tachuk's spot. Obviously, Tachuk is gone, and Toffoli is kind of taking his spot now. And everyone knows that Toffoli is not as good as Tachuk. Everyone knows that. Yeah. But so we were kind of thinking that he was going to give kind of the normal, you know, the boring hockey answer. But Daryl Sutter has a way of making it so boring yet so eventful, <laughs> crazy. And basically, what he answered was that he compared them. He said Toffoli was a major part of a big cup run. Yeah. And then just looked around. He's like, next question. And, and like, he yeah, had... One of those guys was part of a big cup run and played a really big part. Done. Didn't bother mentioning that Tachuk's a great player. Didn't state the obvious fact that Tachuk is probably better than Toffoli. Well, I think, yeah, you don't expect him to say that, but I think what the reporter's asking is because Toffoli on most NHL teams is probably not a first-line right winger and a top power play guy. Like, he's a top six guy, but, like... I don't know. I think on, they, on some of the weaker ones, I think he could for sure be. Yeah, but I get on a team like Calgary that is yeah, expecting yeah. to win a cup. And so I think the answer is there. Like, what in his skill set, right? Like a guy who can play hard in the corners if you got him to a guy who can whatever. Whatever he was looking for in that answer. And he got literally none of it. And yeah. It was so perfect. Daryl Sutter might be one of my favorite coaches in the NHL. One, because of his face. Two, because of the gold mine of quotes. Like Johnny Gaudreau's. Yeah. It's one will always stick out for me. 500th game, they ask him, Johnny Gaudreau hits 500 games played tonight. Something really special for the players. Uh, what do you think of that accomplishment? And he looks at them and says, I hope he plays better than his 499th. <laughs> like, it's just, it's stuff like that, man. <laughs> and like, how does he like not laugh after saying that kind of stuff? And it's so it's short amazing. and it's so grumpy. Yeah. Like, his, his face never changes. Yeah. I feel like even when he wins the cup, he's going to have the same face. <laughs> like, Dude, that guy, like... He always talks about how he needs, like, I've heard him in an interview say, like, that every morning he wakes up and he drinks, like, a jug of coffee. He made sure to use the word jug, not a glass, a jug. Can you imagine Daryl Sutter before his jug of coffee? <laughs> I think his face would be melting. His skin would just be... <laughs> Can you imagine down. Daryl Sutter before a jug of coffee? Yeah. What that guy, like, if that's him, like, on a fucking jug of coffee? Yeah, that's crazy, man. And uh, we're kind of all hooked up here to a big setup for our guest, but... Dave's going to put up the biggest comparison that you can have with Daryl Sutter. You love this one. In the, in the animal kingdom. Yeah. Because I love comparing coaches to various types of fish. Yeah, you know? what he does. And Daryl Sutter is exactly this, a blobfish. Just look at the nose. Look at how droopy it is. That is literally Daryl Sutter. And I love the guy, but come on. Am I, am I wrong? <laughs> it's sick. No, he's an absolute legend. Second oldest coach in the NHL. And uh, he definitely has some... Uh, he's some, old in his ways and his way he talks, man. man. He's a legend. Yeah. But... Anyways, is that, are you good with the pesky Yeah, pick? I'm good with that, man. Um, actually, wait. Sorry, before... I know you said you're good with it, but if we're going to make this a clip and we're going to post it, let's talk about Matthew Kachuk just briefly. He's... Er, <laughs> do you want to talk about Toffoli or Kachuk? Let's talk about this Calgary clip. We'll stick with Calgary. We'll talk yeah, about Tyler Toffoli. Toffoli. What are your realistic expectations for him? He had a crazy big year in Montreal in the yeah. in the Canadian season. How many goals did he have? He was like top 10 in the league, knowing goals. He had a crazy year, like high 30s in goals, right? And then he goes to Montreal back the year after, struggles, goes to Calgary, and some people were complaining about how he performed there. Okay, that was, we kind of overestimated. It was 28 goals. In 56 games, though. Yeah, okay. That makes a lot more sense. Yeah, so I think it's going to be somewhere between that 28 from that first Montreal year and the 11 from last year. Uh, if you're a Calgary fan, you're really hoping it's closer to 28. But if I'm being honest, how old is he? He's 30. Look, he's not old. He's but, gonna play on line one with uh, yeah with Lindholm and Mangiapane. Like they're good line mates. He'll get power play one. Yeah, I don't think he'll pass low thirties. 
Yeah, problem with like. But his, even low thirties, man. I think that's that's, that's good. Oh, you'll take that that's for sure. For a four million dollar contract, yeah. low thirties. I like Tyler Toffoli a lot. I just, I don't know. For me, Calgary, like the only knock I have on that team is like the big like star power wingers. Like you have Toffoli and Coleman and Mangiapane. Like, I don't know. If you look around, they don't have any of those big like power. Like, and you have good depth at the middle. And you have great defense core, but the thing is, you you can't have everything, right? Yeah, I know. So, no, that's a team with very few flaws and a league where almost every team has flaws. So yeah, but let me uh, try and find. Let us know, Flames fan. How many points do you think uh, TT gets this year? Don't even bother. Anyways, <laughs> we'll we'll start wrapping it up. Um, yeah, you want to wrap us up? Yeah, man. If you like the content, if you like the interview, our guest, we're gonna have a lot more of those. Yeah. Very very soon. Actually, this week we're gonna have another massive guest. So yeah, hit that sub button. Like the video, put a comment on. What do you think? What do you think Vancouver's gonna finish this season? What do you think about Brock Besser? Uh, share the video, especially if your friends are Canucks fans. Lou, anything from you? That's it. That's a wrap. <laughs>